Hey guys, and welcome to the inaugural Quality Shot Boxing Awards. So we're going to be doing Boxing Awards for 2020. And I have with me in the blue corner, Kevil, and in the red corner, Musharraf. <laughs> They're not actually going to fight, ding, ding, ding. But I, I'm not a fighter myself, but you can see me as someone who will have an opinion and actually uh, decide the fight. So similar to maybe a referee uh, who has officiated in Mayweather or Canelo fights, let's say. Um, just let's put it that way. <laughs> so a little bit Who's controversial. Who's the home fighter? Who's the yeah. home fighter? Who's the home fighter? Uh, you, can, you guys can dish out between yourselves. <laughs> but, but yeah, so we're going to go through basically our list of categories that I put in place. I'll put it on the screen as well um, here for you guys. So we're just going to go through uh, fighter of the year, prospect of the year, uh, fight of the year, uh, upset of the year, most disappointing fighter. Uh, British Fighter of the Year, Women's Fighter of the Year, Knockout of the Year, and uh, then looking forward to 2021, Fighter to Watch uh, in 2021, and the fight we would most like to see in 2021. So I think a few of these might be a little bit easy to go through, but some a bit trickier than others. Okay, shall we start with, I guess, something that I don't think should hopefully have too much com conflict in uh, Fighter of the Year? So, who shall I start with? Kevil, go on then. Let's yes. say you're you're technically the home fighter there. Go first. <laughs> um, who who do you have as a fighter of the year? Um, you know what? I, I actually want to say Timofimo Tem Lopez based on his bill against Lomachenko. I thought that was a really good fight. Um, I didn't think he would win, actually. I uh, thought I thought Lomachenko would have this one comfortably, considering that Loma was considered pound for pound best fighter in the world. I think this is a really good victory for him. Yeah, no, that's so, yeah. That's I'm, I'm going to see Lopez. That's a good pick. I, I think um, so. Just a bit, little bit of background as well. So the Ring Magazine, who, if you guys uh, don't know, are watching at home, is the belt that's given to the number one of the division, and so it's, they only give it out to fights that are worthy of it. So uh, Tiafimo Lopez has one. Tyson Fury has one um, after he beat Wild in the second fight as well. And they named Tyson Fury and Tifimo Lopez co-fighters of the year, um, which is understandable, I guess, given their feats. What about you, Musharraf, though? Did you go with uh, Tifimo Lopez or someone different? Yeah, for me, it was out of either Tifimo Lopez or Fury. Because I think no one expected what Fury was going to do and pretty much the same for um, Tifimo. So they're kind of similar in that sense. So it's a pick them out of those two. Um, but... I would probably lean towards Teofimo Lopez because I think his upset was bigger. Just. Yeah, I although think... Fury, it's... Although, although Fury's performance was better for me. Yeah, I think Fury's win was more convincing, I think, for sure. But I think yeah. what you guys are saying is Teofimo Lopez, obviously before the fight, it, like pretty much everyone, I would say 80% of people... Uh, were saying that Lomachenko is going to school Tiafimo Lopez because Lo Tiafimo Lopez was seen as being someone who's just a big puncher um, who had some decent uh, like boxing ability, but obviously not that type of master boxer that someone like Lomachenko is. And so people just thought, well, it's either going to go to points, which most likely will happen and Lomachenko will win, uh, or maybe he'll stop Tiafimo Lopez on his feet. And if Tiafimo Lopez does beat Lomachenko, it's going to be by knockout and it's going to be kind of he gets caught with a shot and that's what that 20% of people were mainly thinking as well to be honest with you so I think yeah. in both these fights they didn't go the way that people thought it'd go and that was one of the exactly. options Tiafimo Lopez points and Fury knockout were two options that people thought actually that's never going to happen so uh, I'm pretty sure the bookmakers would have made a lot of money uh, from that probably uh, with people <laughs> placing bets on uh, different outcomes but yeah the Tiafimo Lopez one I thought was, was super impressive just because as you guys said it was a big upset and Lomachenko being that pound for pound, we know he's a little bit small for the weight, but to be honest, not many people were saying that beforehand in terms of, I think, going through it and saying, oh, yeah, well, he might lose because he's too small. I think most people were saying it's fine. He's obviously good enough and he can clean up the division. Uh, with Tyson Fury, I guess people were, a lot of people were expecting him to win, but on points, kind of similar to how he did it in the first fight. And then John T. Wilder, they were thinking similarly to Tifimo Lopez. Look, if he catches him, then it's kind of, it's good night probably. Yeah. Obviously completely flipped the script and then came forward and uh, 
yeah, just completely pressurized uh, Deontay Wilder. And as you said, Michelle, just dominated completely in that fight, yeah. I thought. And a lot more comprehensive winner. Um, so I think both of you are going to Tia Fuma Lopez. So I'm happy to go with that as well. I think it, the win wasn't as comprehensive, but I just think no. if you take the the kind of stage the, that was set beforehand, yeah, the achievement, yeah. he's now... look. I mean, I don't want to go too much into the WBC franchise, order, but he is an undisputed champion at that weight. At one three five, yeah. um, he's kind of become a star overnight. So I think, I think he definitely deserves that accolade for sure. So happy to go with that. Uh, honorable mentions though to Canelo, uh, who became a four weight world champion officially, beating Callum Smith um, and Jamel Charlo, who beat uh, Jason Rosario. And uh, he had it was a unification fight, and after winning that fight, he actually ended up claiming three out of the four belts at light middleweight. So. I think that was a very good win, to be honest, because uh, he, I think it was a 50-50 fight, to be honest. A lot of people were heading towards Rosario as well uh, yeah. because he had the more, he had more belts and an impressive win uh, prior to that fight. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. So you guys happy with Tifimo Lopez? Yeah. 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 Well done, Tifimo Lopez. I'm, you're definitely not watching this, I'm sure, but thank you for being <laughs> our, our quality shots fighter of the year. <laughs> one day he might, one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, one day. Our 2020 fighter of the year, Tifimo Lopez. Okay, let's go on to something that's, uh, I'm sure, will be a bit more of a talking point, uh, prospect of the year from 2020. So someone who we think uh, probably well, doesn't really have a belt at the moment in terms of a world title belt anyway, but it's mm. someone that we're thinking, okay, they've, either broken through this year or they've looked good, a younger fighter that's good and we think, you know, going forward, he'll actually be a superstar. So the reason why I said not world champion is because I think most people will go towards someone like Javante Davis. Um, yeah. Or Teofimo Lopez again. Or Teofimo Lopez, yeah. So um, that's why I kind of wanted to go away from it a little bit. Uh, Mushraf, let's go with you first. What do you think? Uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. Yeah. No, very, very sort of uh, very good prospect. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I, I, I was trying to think of Brits, but um, Sonny Edwards is one to be fair. Yeah, he's, I was going to say I was going to say Conor Ben, but I don't know if he's past twenty four yet. I thought oh. Conor Ben looked good in his fight, but I think I think Virgil Ortiz by quite a bit, quite a distance. Yeah, Virgil Ortiz. So Conor Ben's actually twenty four. So we okay. can include him in twenty four and under. I don't mind. But uh, yeah, Conor Ben had a really impressive win against Formella, who went. Uh, to points with Sean Porter uh, in a world title fight prior to their fight. And Conor Ben boxed very well, I thought, in that. But yeah, Virgil Ortiz just looks like a wrecking ball machine. Um, but he's not just that. Yeah, he's not just that, to be fair. I think it's, that's a bit unfair for me to say. But he is just a very well-rounded and well rounded fighter. Yeah. Um, and someone to look at. And I'm pretty sure anyone at 147 at welterweight, no one wants to fight him. You're not going to see no. Spence Crawford... Uh, any of these five sports, and it's not to say they're scared of them, but he's got basically little reward. Uh, sorry, high, he's risk. high risk for no reward, bit pretty much. Virgil Ortiz are uh, coming up, and uh, it's a win that might look better long term, but in the, in the interim, it won't. Uh, what about you, Kevil? Who do you, who have you gone for? You know what? I would have actually gone for welterweight Jaron Ennis. Um, he's twenty. Free and I think yeah, quality. Ring really. Magazine also agreed that he was a uh, prospect of the year for 2020. I think based on his last few wins against Abru and I, I can't pronounce this other guy's name, Eubov, I think he's done well. But again, it's well to wait. So I think all the pro- like both these prospects should probably fight each other to determine who the best one is. But I'd actually agree with Ring Magazine for 2020 at German Ellis. Yeah, I think Jaron Ennis, uh, those, it's funny actually, you guys obviously got both gone towards the 147 welterweights, but Jaron yeah. Ennis is quality. He's well, so yeah. good. And uh, something that obviously you said, Kev, about hopefully seeing the, those two fight, I think it's probably unlikely, but if it does I'll happen, okay. yeah, <laughs> if it, I mean, I, well, it's unlikely to happen now, I yeah. think. It, once yeah, one of them gets a belt, the yeah, they'll definitely fight. But it kind of reminds me, obviously, it's way too early to say it, but. You know, your Roy Jones and kind of Bernard Hopkins, you could ha- have that type of rivalry where they fight two, three times, but not one after the other, but in a space of, Down you know, whatever, 10, 10 yeah. 11 years, um, and they fight each other two, three times in that space. So I think both of them are quality. Jaron Ennis, um, it was a no, his last fight was a no contest because there was yeah. a clash of heads, but he was boxing well. And I think 
a knockout was on the cards again. He's very, very explosive, probably the most explosive fighter um, prospect there is. And Ben Davison's really high on him. He absolutely loves Jaron Ennis um, yeah. and says that he watches a lot of him. Uh, in terms of British fighters, I, I mentioned Sonny Edwards is quite good. He's the British, I think, Commonwealth champion. Uh, so Charlie Edwards' brother, who uh, was previously a um, a champion. Oh, so he's can. at he's at flyweight and super flyweight. Sonny Edwards, he, he kind of floats in between. And Dennis McCann, I don't know if you guys are too um, aware of him, but Dennis McCann, BT fighter, Frank Warren's very high on him. He's uh, Southpaw, uh, only 19 years old. And he's been on some BT shows and he's in the mold of, uh, obviously, again, I don't want, I'm kind of compa- comparing styles, not obviously caliber, but Nassim Hamid in the in the way that he fights. Um, very exciting fighter. And uh, I think we, you guys, if you haven't heard of him this year, you'll definitely hear of him next year uh, for sure because he's uh, rising up very, very quickly and is a very good prospect. But yeah, Jaron Ennis think, and Virgil sorry, Ortiz. Yeah, go on. Sorry, one more I think that I actually forgot about is Hamza Shiraz. Yes, really Hamza Shiraz. Yep, yep. He's, yeah. he's actually very, very good. Yeah, the European champ. May, 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 maybe not the level of like someone like Virgil Ortiz, but he's actually very good. And I think he's about, what, 21, 22? Yeah, he's 21, 22. So he's still very young. So Hamza Shiraz, uh, European champion. At, so it's that super welterweight. So he's in the same yeah, division as Anthony Fowler. Yeah, or light middle, yeah. Uh, Anthony Fowler, Ted Cheeseman, uh, JJ Metcalf. So there's some really good fights out there for him. Uh, he's 21. And yeah. uh, actually, we joked about it but obviously Kevin we watched it towering Inferno that six yes. foot seven Goliath who I'm actually fights yeah. in the same wet weight and I said they should fight because they're both kind of bean poles but and I say <laughs> it in the nicest way but they're just such good fighters uh, for yeah. their size and they're quite nimble as well but yeah he's a, a very good prospect as well so yeah Jaron Ennis or Virgil Ortiz I'm happy to go with either what do you guys yeah. think I mean, you know what? I don't really mind, to be fair. You have the deciding vote. Uh, I'll decide. Yeah, vote. Go okay. I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with Jan Ennis, just because I think he's slightly in front, uh, just for his development, slightly. Um, but I think it could go either way. But I think um, Jan Ennis, well done. You are our prospect of the year 2020. Uh, you probably are not watching as well, but you're probably <laughs> a bit more likely to watch than uh, Tifi Malopo. So. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, who knows? All right, okay, let's go on to fight of the year uh, because there were some cracking fights in 2020. I mean, there's so many to pick from, but I think there's some that probably will stand out to you guys. Um, Okay. Easy one, this one. Yeah, you think easy one? Okay, well, let's go with Kevil first because you you, you seem very sure of yourself. What do you think, Kevil? Do you say fight of the year? Just fight. Yeah, fight of uh, 2020. I I have a couple in mind. I actually have like three in mind, which is hard for me to choose from. I mean, I know one that was ranked was the Zapida versus uh, Baron Cheek fight, which had like eight knockdowns and then it yeah. came to a legal knockout, yeah. which I thought was quite good. Um, I also want to say, for, for, for me, fight of the year was also Dillian Bight versus Alexander Povetkin. It, it was a similar fashion to the Zapida fight where some guys get knocked down multiple times and he just ends it in a lethal knockout. So for me, it's between one of those two. Um I'd, I'd like to steer towards the White versus Povetkin fight. Okay. Considering Povetkin sort of passed his prime, he's a bit old and he still did really well to knock out White. I think there's a there's a bit of, um, what's the word? You can relate to that more, I guess, as well, can't you? Because we've seen Povetkin live uh, against AJ and obviously Dylan White we know a lot about. So I think there's the Baron Chick Zapeda fight maybe it, as, a, as actual fight might be more exciting but I think as you said you're looking at the significance as well so it's quite interesting uh, yeah and I yeah. yeah I know heavyweight's a bit better and I know um I know yeah. Povetkin's quite good so yeah I thought I, I'd like to say Povetkin okay, works as well enough. what do you think Musharraf I think you're going to go as a paid Baron chick, me, yeah as a paid Baron chick. <laughs> crazy but, yeah, crazy easy. crazy fight um I didn't watch it live but I heard about it and then yeah I, I had to get on and it didn't disappoint at all just Didn't ridiculous. Even off ambulance as well it was quite brutal. Yeah, it was yeah. a brutal knockout, absolutely brutal. Yeah. Um, and this is a guy who obviously is a former world champ, so he's yeah. uh, he's no slouch. This is a pretty you know high caliber fight. Zapeda lost to uh, Jose Ramirez, who has yeah. his world champion at the moment. So both of them are kind of fringe world level or world level, I'd say. And, and Baron uh, lost to Josh, Josh Taylor. Taylor, right? 
yeah, and the, Super and the World series. Boxing Super Series, yeah. So yeah, I'm just action packed fight. Both of them really good. Uh, honorable mentions, I think, as well to Estrada versus Quadras too. I don't, I don't know if any of you know too much about it or seen the I clips, really but that yeah. yeah, that was just ridiculous. Um, just absolutely ridiculous fight. Uh, and Estrada is just all action, but Quadras, their styles seem to gel very well. Um, I think I've, I've got here Lomachenko Lopez as well, just to note, just yeah. because of obviously the significance of the fight, similar, I guess, to why you're saying Kevil as well, and uh, Wilder Fury too, just because of yeah. how yeah. it went. And I just think it was a, a it was a very good fight, but obviously it was one sided. So I'm kind of happy to go with either of yours. Um, I just think maybe because of the the drama and action, let's go a bit more left field and let's go as a paid versus Barrington because I also think. Uh, White Povetkin may feature in one of the other categories as well. I'm pretty sure yeah. we'll discuss yeah. it. So yeah, Zapeda versus Baranchik. Um, yeah, well done to both fights for the fight of the year, uh, 2020. You have quality shots approval, and again, I think Baranchik probably. I don't know actually. Do fi- are fighters happy to win fight fight of the year if they get knocked out? Well, I'm assuming not, <laughs> but I don't probably know. Not. No. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. remembered, They're like... remembered for the wrong reasons. Well, there's, yeah. there's, there's some absolutely nutters, aren't they? Fighters who are just like, well, I excited the fans. That's all I care about. It doesn't matter, you know. There's some people, like, I think Dylan White said it after the Pepkin fight. He said, he said, oh, you know, he was quite philosophical. He said it happens. He said, you know, uh, but, you know, I'm glad the fans enjoyed it and stuff. And I'm like, but you just got knocked out. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> but I think fight, some fighters are just loopy and they just, all they care about is fighting. They just love the actual um, the adrenaline. When they're fighting, just sometimes that, with the actual reputation. She's, she's always yeah. like that. Yeah, she's always like that. Yeah. And Dylan White says, "I just uh, uh, he actually, if you hear him speak, he says, uh, obviously he wants to win every fight, but he says I want to be known as someone who never ducked anyone and fought the best. But he doesn't say um, I want to be remembered as someone who beat the best. And so that kind Remember. of to me gives the mentality of obviously he wants to beat them, but he wants to be known as someone who beats, uh, kind of fights them, and then says." Okay, you know what? I never ducked anyone, and I did. I did my best, and I I pushed myself. I think so. It's, See, I'm, I'm it's, surprised he'd say something like that. That's something that Chisora would say, but not so much White, mm-hmm. considering White really wanted to get the belts. Yeah, you know, we sort of yeah regain the heavyweight um, the championships. Yeah. So I, I think he, he, he yeah he's still a little bit of a work in progress. I think though, Dylan White. Mm. I think he's a bit realistic with himself to a degree. He talks a lot, I think, for sure. But there's some fighters that I think he does think he can figure out. But there's others which I think he probably thinks, I can beat them. But he is in the mindset of it is heavyweight boxing. Like, as you said, Kevin, when you can just get caught like he did against Povetkin. So sometimes yeah. you can get a loss. And he's the old school uh, kind of thought of, you. if you lose, it doesn't matter too much. As long as you can come back and you kind of win your titles, etc. then mm. that's the main thing. Because the best of all lost in terms of, apart from Mayweather, but you're talking about Muhammad Ali or whoever else, Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, all those guys. Okay, let's go on to upset of the year. Because there's a few of these, to be fair, yeah. where I think, uh, yeah, obviously we've touched upon one, uh, but let's go to you first, Musharraf. What do you think, upset of the year? Who, who did you have down? I've got, or which fight? I've got a few. I've got a few. I mean, we've already mentioned Tiafimo Lopez. That's quite a big upset. Um, but, but the two I'd put ahead of that is Povetkin against Dylan White. And then my probably first choice, these two are quite close, but I think I'd lean more towards um, Hellenius against Konaki. That was, that was one that I, yeah, I didn't expect at all. To be yeah, fair, I didn't actually... Povetkin to knock out Dylan White at all either, but I think it's out of one of those two. Okay, that's fair enough. I think Hellenius um, Kaunaki is an interesting one, actually, because that was... I completely forgot about that, to be honest. That was off my radar. But yeah, that was a big shock because Kaunaki was being billed as someone to then fight for a world title in one or two yeah. fights. And Hellenius is kind of seen as a gatekeeper that kind of Definitely. Knocked, knocked him out. And that was a huge upset. Yeah, we touched on, obviously, Dylan White and Povetkin. That was an upset. Um, I don't know if it was more or less, in my opinion, I guess just because Povetkin, I think, is still dangerous. But uh, before I kind of go into that, Kevin, what did you have as your upset of the year? Yeah, I, I agree with what you just said now, Fazan, about I, I didn't know Povetkin versus why it was that big of an upset, considering Povetkin's still quite good. And for that reason, I'd steer towards the Lopez-Lomachenko uh, fight as the biggest upset for me. Um, okay. 
That's fair enough. I also have uh, here noted uh, Joe Joyce versus Daniel Dubois. I was, yeah, I was actually going to mention that. Because as well. Daniel Dubois yeah. before the fight, I, 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 I think as someone who, it's weird, right? Because a lot of people, actually, it's not a lot. Of, a lot of people were going towards Daniel Dubois. Maybe more people that are casual fans, but I, I think even in our our boxing group where we're talking about it, I think to be fair, like you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I was pretty much the only one that backed Joe Joyce just because I thought of his pedigree and stuff. But even then, I wasn't very sure of it. I was more just like, I think he'll because of his pedigree, etc., and who he's fought on his resume. But you'll yeah. see as the underdog, d- despite kind of having the better resume of what former world champions and kind of world class fighters, whereas Dubois kind of fought tomato cans and no offense to the people that he fought but uh, i mean he hadn't really fought anyone at mm. all uh, apart from nathan gorman who i think had issues at the time as well so but obviously seen as a very very big prospect and everyone was very high on him big hype around uh this kid i think that, that fight was more even than the rest though That's yeah that I'd say. okay yeah, yeah i think that was think... that was quite maybe not 50 50 but it was like i don't know 60 40 yeah okay I think, low, and then I've got here um, one that's kind of a little bit less significant, but was a big upset, was uh, Maxi Hughes versus uh, jo- John O'Carroll. I don't know if you guys know who John O'Carroll is, but John O'Carroll I know who beat... John O'Carroll is, but I, did, I didn't watch the fight. Yeah, so there's a reason for that. It's because it was a, it's supposed to be a tune-up fight or just a kind of keep busy fight for John mm. O'Carroll. And uh, he fought with no crowd and he got beat by Maxi Hughes, who basically this guy has got a couple of losses on his records and was seen as kind of being an opponent just come in. And John O'Carroll just really underperformed after an impressive uh, win against Scott Quigg on a Sky show. And uh, obviously John O'Carroll fought for a world title against Tevin Farmer has improved quite a bit since. But this was a big, big upset in the sense that uh, no one really ha- gave Maxi Hughes any chance of winning. Um, so that's a bit of a left field one. But yeah, Loma Lopez... I think that that was a big one for sure. So I'm kind of happy to go with, I mean, what do you think? So, Ken, well, you said Loma Lopez and I'm sure if you said kind of Hellenius and Kaunaki. I think those two are, are pretty big for me. Um, yeah. You guys change your minds? Are you still have, or are you still thinking uh, the same thoughts of Loma Lopez for you, Kev, and Kaunaki, Hellenius for you, I'm sure. Yeah. The thing is, I haven't really watched a Kaunaki uh, one that much, so I can't yeah. really out for that one yeah so yeah. I think about Lopez just based on my knowledge okay okay it's a tough one I've got to decide sometimes I don't down, want to be just... down to you, down <laughs> yeah, to you yeah. yeah I don't it's tough it's tough actually because I think the Kaunaki one the kind of uh... Teofimo like could have been in a lot of these categories yeah <laughs> he could have been prospect of the year fighter of the year upset of the year <laughs> fighter of the year yeah yeah, based on one fight, yeah. yeah based on one fight because it, it was such a significant fight um yeah. Okay, you know what then? Let's let's go let's go uh, Kanaki versus Hellenius. Uh, just because I think Loma Lopez is, is a more obvious one. I think a lot of people would put it in and I would be happy to put it in, to be honest with you. Mm. But I think just because uh, for me I, I didn't really think of it to be honest with the Kanaki Hellenius one it's on my mm. head. But now when I think about it, it was quite significant uh, in the sense of because um... Kanaki was ranked, I think, in all of the Yeah, no no, he was well. he was ranked in the top ten in a lot of them and I think he was looking to fight, I think he was promised the Deontay Wilder fight, um, kind of after that, and Hellenius just ruined it. So, uh, and and a gatekeeper really. It's like I guess if you match someone like Marius Wack against I don't know Dylan White, and then Marius Wack won, um, and we're talking yeah. about like a fit Dylan White. So, uh, I think that that's kind of upset would have been okay. Let's go on to something which, <laughs> which um, whoever gets voted for this will not be too happy. And actually, before I do, well done to uh, Kaunaki and Hellenius for upset of the year, especially Hellenius, because I'm pretty sure Kaunaki mm. would just be pretty disappointed with that. Um, okay. <clears throat> Most disappointing fighter of the year. This one was a weird one for me, just before we start. Are we saying a fight that we saw that was disappointing or... The fighter. Like... Yeah, a fighter. Fight so, 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 so as a fighter, so it could even be a fighter that has been inactive and hasn't fought for the end. You're yeah. disappointed he hasn't fought. It could be a fighter who's been, who obviously has lost in a really bad fashion. It could be a fighter that hasn't done as much as you thought he should have done in the year. Yeah. So kind of someone for you personally that you thought you've watched them and just thought, I'm not happy with their year in 2020. I don't think they've actually, their trajectory is either, has not gone up. It's gone, it's plateaued or gone down really. Yeah. Um, so Kevin, do you want to go first? Few, I've got a few to yeah. be fair, but yeah, go I, ahead. 
I, to be fair, I only really have one which I thought was disappointed. Okay. Well, I was disappointed by which was uh, Daniel Dubois. Um, okay. Not, I, I think the way he lost it, it was as obviously we saw is that he quit, which was annoying. But I think it was also his actual style, like his lack of defense throughout that whole fight. In terms of, you know, he didn't slip jabs. He didn't really dodge. He just tried to go for a knockout. And especially when you're a prospect like that, it wasn't really a smart move. So, yeah, I, I, I have to say that Daniel Dubai for disappointment. Yeah, I think he was actually, he was definitely prospect of the year in 2019 in a lot of people's, uh, like, magazines or whatever else it might have been, I think, for sure, especially uh, for British publications. So, I think there was a lot expected of him. But one thing I'll say is that I think at the time, I, I, I will hold my hands up and say that I thought he'd quit and I, I was kind of a bit, critical towards him but it's come out after that he fractured his orbital bone which is pretty yeah. bad and actually Kevin to be fair you're one of the people that said you know actually has he quit though because obviously he doesn't want to lose his eyesight and stuff and yeah, uh, so actually you you are you are actually correct in this in this instance because yeah, uh, if he ca- so bad yeah if he'd carried on uh, so sometimes it's weird because sometimes you see swelling and it's not actually a, a break it's just actual swelling kind of around the eye that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, if when you get you get punched or there's a it kind of swells up or you turn your ankle and it swells up. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not a yeah. break. It's just something that it's like more ligament or muscle related. But for him, you're right. And actually, if he carried on, he could have lost his sight. So I think the doctor said to him that it's a good thing he hadn't carried on. But yeah, that that's I, I can understand why you go with him. And I'm surprised these guys didn't pull him out of that in a previous round, considering how yeah. I think they were going to. I think, I they, think they were they, going to. They said to him one more round. So I think at the end of that round, but maybe they could have pulled him out earlier. But yeah. it's a weird one because actually I think uh, they, he, the coach said to him, Kept on asking him every round, like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, it's fine. I can see blah, blah, blah. So I think Daniel Dubois was... He's obviously going to say he's fine, though, right? A fight yeah. not going to say I'm too hurt. Yeah, like most that. fighters, I guess. That's Too a good point. Tried. Yeah, 100%. Um, what about you, Mashara? Who do you have? Or what number of people do you have? Uh, Chris Eubank Jr. So, um, yeah, he just hasn't fought in it. I know he fought, he fought actually last December, but his yeah. fight got stopped prematurely and yeah. he hasn't fought all of this year obviously there's been COVID but you know before that his last fight was against De Gale which was at the start of 19 start of 19 end of 20 so around that time so it's what pretty much two years without a meaningful fight and he's what in his prime years and he always talks about world titles and stuff so I want to see him kind of compete to see if 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 he's if he can prove himself or not, because you know he's fallen short, but I think he can go again for sure, definitely. But, so I want to see him. And then the other one for me is Amir Khan. He's like he's he's like my guilty pleasure. I love watching him fight, but at the same time I hate it. But I haven't seen him for a long time as well. So okay. get back in the ring. Okay, fair enough. Now I think um, I shall touch upon the Amir Khan one first. Yeah, go on, go on, Kevin. I was just going to add one more for me yeah. would be Deontay Wilder purely based on the okay. excuses that he came out against Fury. Oh. Not based on his loss, but based on the excuses. But yeah, that's just okay. as well. No, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, good let's touch upon Ami Khan first because I think that's a pretty easy one. I think obviously, I, I agree with you, Mishar. Uh, he's actually one of the reasons why I got into boxing in the first place, watching the Olympics. And um, I am a big fan of him as a boxer. Um, yeah. But I just think from what I've heard and seen, like he's... He's obviously in the twilight of his Hopefully career. The end. Yeah, and and let's be honest. I mean, if he's going to fight, it, he's look he's waiting for a big fight against someone like a Pacquiao, etc. And and I think he'll wait a year or two. And if he doesn't get it, then he'll just uh, call it a day. Um, yeah. But I don't yeah. think I think he's past the kind of he's past that. Um, I feel like he's past the t- the time where he would have like a couple of Mickey Mouse fights and then wait for that that kind of big yeah. name. To be fair, he hasn't had too many Mickey Mouse fights in his career, but I think obviously he had that fight in Saudi Arabia against Billy Dibb, which was a Mickey Mouse fight. And Kel- the Kelbrook fight's yeah. not going to happen. Go on, Kel, what were you going to say? I think since Terence Crawford, I think he sort yeah. of slowed down his number yeah. of fights. And he might yeah. be... That was a punishing of, fight as well. Yeah, and I think he might be headed slowly into retirement, but in a tactical way. <laughs> like, <laughs> it could be, yeah. He could be. I, I think you're yeah. right. I think, I think he's got one foot in... Uh, in uh, kind of one okay, foot okay. in retirement and one foot uh, kind of waiting behind thinking, you know what, uh, can I get that Pacquiao fight, basically, which I think is the one he really wants because he knows that obviously... Yeah. I don't think he'll get it, though. I think there's I don't too think many he'll people get it. ahead of him in the line. 
Yeah. Honestly, I think McGregor has a better chance of getting Pacquiao. Which than is really Khan. sad. Because I'd, I'd yeah. love to see him get the chance. I don't think he'd win. But I think for him, I can tell he he's wanted those fights for so long. So if he could just get... Uh, he wanted Pacquiao Mayweather for so long. Mayweather promised him the fight multiple occasions. And it just never materialised. But mm. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Eubank Jr. Uh, is a good one as well. Obviously fought Korobov. Um, but he uh, injured his shoulder in the, I think, the second round. And uh, yeah. obviously, it's not you can't really take anything from that. And yeah, as you said, James DeGale, he fought him in February 2019, uh, which was a, good, a pretty good fight. I saw it was a bit scrappy, but it was a good win for him anyway. Um, put him into retirement, James DeGale. Look, I mean, yeah. you're right, because he's trained by Roy Jones Jr. And someone yeah, made yeah, the I joke. See, like, I, re- I really want to see what difference he made. If yeah. But yeah. you know what? It's, it's funny because obviously people were saying that Chris Eubank Jr., Instead of being trained by Roy Jones Jr., he's training Roy Jones Jr. for the Mike Tyson exhibition because yeah. that's what ended up happening. Roy Jones Jr. fought in 2020 and Eubank Jr. didn't. And how does that, like before the year, if someone said that to you, you'd be like, what? Um, so, yeah, you're right. He needs to buck it up. Um, if he, I think he wants to fight in front of crowds or whatever, but look, he is a decent draw in the UK. In the mm, US, yeah. he is not that much of a draw at all. Um, he's pretty so if he wants to kind of build a name for himself there he's just got to get out and fight people and just get on with it pbc fighter as well right yeah yeah he is and he keeps calling out they've got they've got a lot of middleweight so i don't really see the issue they do and And super middles as well because he can fight at both weights yeah i mean he keeps calling out canelo and obviously i think he keeps calling out charlo etc that would be a good fight i'd like to see him against charlo why not um i think it'd be an exciting fight he's an all-action fighter um but yeah, Ken, what you said about Deontay Wilder and Deontay <laughs> Wilder, I think obviously the way, I think the way he lost is probably a bit more disappointing in that I think as well in the fact that you realise, I think before, right you know he's got his limitations but after yeah. that fight, you realise he can only really fight one way um, and to be fair, a lot of people might have thought that about Tyson Fury before, but I think Tyson Fury is different because he's got that more solid base and even though yeah. Deontay Wilder's got a bronze medal at the Olympics um, you can see with him there are limitations to his uh, to his game and the way that he boxes. So I just think that was a bit disappointing that he he's not able to adjust in fights. I don't think he is at all. I think he's pretty yeah. reliant on one weapon, which is that right hand or, or just power, really, and waiting yeah. for an opening. Uh, but yeah, the excuse is obviously, what was it? The suit's too heavy was the first excuse he came out with. Yeah, and then it was, yeah. he'd been poisoned by Mark Breland. And then it was the ref or something is uh, gloves, in yeah yeah wait, wait the, the gloves yeah the loaded gloves he said oh I I felt like there was an object or a stone or something or a rock in in the glove and that's why I've got an indent in my head and so first it was the team that came out his brother was saying it and then actually he started backing up and then he came up with that really bizarre video didn't he uh, where he was. <laughs> Yeah. Right back that video of Fury where his thumb bit dis- like wasn't connected to the rest yeah. of the glove, so the referee had to check that out. But that's fine. The glove just probably tore. But yeah. Wilder was trying to use that as an excuse to say, "Look, he's cheated yeah. in the past." It yeah. didn't really seem like a cheat. It was just yeah. a little, you know. But also, glove. You, you know, you know, if, if you hit someone with a flappy glove, mm. it's got less power in it anyway. So, so yeah. his point is completely yeah, it, invalid. So it's just a really, it's just so funny to, to hear him talk it about. It makes it. his loss look worse. And the thing is, yeah, 100%. And the issue with him now is, as well is that a lot of people will be thinking he's making his excuses. And a lot of people are thinking he can't get over that loss and how is he going to respond now? Um, mm. One fight I'd love to see him in, which I'll get a little bit off but I want to say is, um, is him versus Dylan White because they're mm. both coming off losses. And I think there's a lot of beef there. I don't think it will happen because uh, Dylan White is supposed to fight Povetkin, but that might not happen. But I just think it's too short notice to fight in February. But both are looking for a fight. It looks like uh, that would be huge. And that would be uh, a fight in 2021, which to be honest, I, I would have up there as, as one of the ones I'd love to see. Um, one thing I want to add though, um, just a small part of me, even though it's done very badly, he's going to buy it in a, like a really bad way, is that, he's trying to bait out Fury into taking it again because yeah. of all the court case stuff. It could just be like an elaborate ploy just to get him back in the ring, but it's just done really poorly. So I think he wants to do it. Um, he's trying to force it, but he knows it's not going to happen next. He's trying to next. dramatise it. Yeah, he knows it's not going to happen next. It's going to happen later d- later in the year, if it, if it ever does happen, which I, I don't think... I have a feeling it's not going to happen anymore. We'll see. Okay, so uh, I need to decide. Most disappointing five to the year. I'm going to go with... Um, because of the pure inactivity, I'm going to go with um, Eubank Jr. 
just because I just think um, I think Daniel Dubois is a very good one. So is Dante Wilder, just because of the craziness. That might be, I might add a category for a craziest moment of the year. That might be the Dante yeah. Wilder accusations. <laughs> but, but Eubank Jr., uh, for, I think in terms of most disappointing fights, it hasn't come out, hasn't fought the whole of 2020. So I think Canelo would have been it for me if he hadn't fought this year. But um, Eubank, obviously he did in the end. So Eubank Jr. Yeah. for me, um, I would say well done, but I don't think it's a good accolade to have. You've won quality shots, most disappointing fighter of the year. So get out in 2021 and be active, <laughs> even though he's not watching it before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you know what? Why don't we... I was just saying that, can we can we agree that the uh, the John Tier Wilder accusations is probably the craziest moment of the year? Yeah. Take that happily. Yeah, yeah Kevin, yeah. you were saying that it's pretty much the... Um, what were you saying? You were saying, I don't think anyone's done it to that kind of level. Those yeah. of excuses. <laughs> no one's made that kind of excuse. Um, yeah, they've, they've all gone to that, uh, those kind of lengths to go through it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't think, yeah, I, I have to give it to Wilder. <laughs> well done, John Till Wilder. For I winning the most won this year, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The most craziest moment of the year. You've won Crosby Shots, most crazy moment of the year. Okay. Let's go on to British Fighter of the Year. Um, so I want to kind of exclude maybe. I mean, actually, we can include him, but I just feel like let, let's maybe have two because I feel like Tyson Fury will be the first answer that most of you give. That's, that's, but, what, oh, that's how I've done it. So I've given it to Fury and then I've yeah. got another one, yeah. At, like, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Kev? Well, obviously, I'm assuming you've got Fury as your first pick. I've got Fury. I've also got Joy, Joy, Joy Jost down there as well. Joy Joyce, yeah. Um, based on his win against Dubai. But yeah. I guess, yeah, Fury would be the easy one. <laughs> Yeah, I think Joe Joyce. I've also got him on the top, off the top of my head, Lyndon Arthur, that win Lyndon against Arthur, yeah, uh, Anthony Yard. Uh, like that was a big upset, um, and also I think uh, someone who I've actually interviewed. So I'm just going to mention him, Jazza Dickens, uh, won the MTK <laughs> Golden contract um, over Ryan Walsh, and he's now WBO number one, um, and there's also WBO European featherweight champ as well. So uh, he's yeah. going to be fighting Navarrete uh, next year most likely, and obviously Josh Taylor, but I think he had a better year in 2019, uh, didn't he, when he won the WBSS. Um, mm. Yeah, what do you think? So Tyson Fury, obviously, I think we can put as our, we know that he's going to be number one, but apart from that, what do you think, Musharraf, who have you got? Lyndon Arthur. Yeah, I think Lyndon yeah. Arthur, very, very good underrated. To us, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I knew nothing about him, pretty much. Yeah, and, I've, and only, I've only seen... The last two fights of his, so against yep. um, Dex Spellman. That's mm. it, because De- because they both fought Dex Spellman before their fight, and then obviously the Anthony Yard fight. And yeah, I really really like the look of him, and he's yep. in like his prime years. I think he's what at that coming up to thirty, so yep. he can really like push on from this. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think obviously that was a. To be honest, actually, we didn't include that, but that was an upset as well. I don't think it would have yeah. won upset of the year, but that was an upset because Anthony yeah. Yard, uh, came, even though. Uh, and Lyndon Arthur had the Commonwealth uh, belts and he was supposed to be the A-side it wasn't billed as that it was billed against as Yard versus Arthur because obviously Yard has fought Kovalev and he is really BT Sports big draw um, apart from obviously the Tyson Furies and Daniel Dubois so yeah he won a pretty for me I thought it was a relatively convincing win Uh, you utilised his jab really well and very, very solid jab. And it, uh, he'd actually um, injured his hand, his right hand, before yeah, the fight. So, so you could one hardly and a half throw it. hands and he won. Yeah, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. He threw, I think he threw the right hand two or three times. Yeah. And uh, Anthony R just wasn't proactive enough for me. So that was a, a very, very good win for me. Um, what do you think, Kevil? Joe Joyce, and then Arthur, what have you got? You, you said Joe Joyce, which I think is a very good win as well for him. I, I, I'm happy with either, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't watched Arthur's fight, but based on the record, I've just had a look. He does, he's done quite well too. So I'm, yeah. I'd, I'd say either. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's go with... Oh, it's a difficult one. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? Let, let's, let's go with Joe Joyce. I just think because of the hype around it, uh, that fight, I think there was a lot of hype around um, who would win that and whoever wins that is going to go on to probably fight yeah. for a world title next I'm, year. I'm happy with that. I think he but, deserves it. Either yeah. of them deserve it, but... I, I think he's... Re- I think he... And to be fair, he probably... 
deserves it as well because he he was so underrated for no reason um, before that as well. So I'm happy to give it to him just because of that. Mm. So well done, Joe Joyce, for winning our uh, British Fighter of the Year. Um, obviously, we're excluding uh, Tyson Fury from that because I think he's the obvious choice for that one. Okay, let's go on to something which um, I'm not... I mean, I, I've watched a lot more women's fighting this year than I probably ever have. And I think it's it's definitely booming a lot more than it has done. Uh, but let's Especially go on to... in lockdown. Yep, yeah, 100%. Uh, quality Shots Women's Fighter of the Year. So, Musharraf, do you want to go first? Who have you got? Uh, yeah, like, I'll be honest and say I don't watch too much, but I've watched a few. And from what I've seen... Um, uh, Terry Harper yeah, was the best yeah. women's fighter for me. Yeah, Terry um, Harper, I think she very good. Three or four times, and she's world champ now, and she's young, and she can just carry on going ahead. Yeah, really good fight against Natasha Jonas, which was I think that was on the undercard of Becky and White, which was a draw, yeah, was a little a bit draw. contentious, but I think that was a quality fight. And then obviously after that, she came back and uh, cut a, a very good win. Um, after that as well so and, and the way she won the world title was really good as well um, yeah. Kevin well, who have you got anyone different or who are you going for I think even Katie Harper but I also um, it's Katie Taylor Katie yeah. Taylor sorry Katie Taylor's done quite yeah. well uh, she got a win this year too um, but yeah same, same I don't watch too much women's boxing yeah. but I know Katie Taylor's like be like active yeah Katie Taylor um, is I think is she yeah, so Katie Taylor, Clarissa Shields, those two really are seen as the premium like women fighters. Um, they're the two really that have grown women's boxing. Uh, Clarissa Shields, I think, is now a three-division world champ, and yeah. uh, Katie Taylor is a multi-weight world champ, and she was undisputed as well at lightweight. So she's uh, had those a couple of fights against Delphine Pursue, which are really uh, entertaining one yes. on the card of AJ... Uh, what was it, AJ Ruiz? Ruiz one. one. Yeah, it was AJ Ruiz yeah. one, not two. And then also on the undercard of, I think it was, was it Povetkin? It was on the undercard of Povetkin White too, yeah. It was uh, It was definitely in um, uh, lockdown. So Yeah, it was definitely in uh, fight camp, wasn't it? So that she was, might again, have been headline though. She might have been actually. Um, I'm trying to think whether she was, but e- either way, yeah, really, really good fight against look. Delphine Pursuit. I think that, that was an action-packed fight for sure. Um, and to be fair, like another war. Uh, I've also got noted Jessica McCaskill. So she beat uh, Cecilia Breakhouse, which I don't know how familiar you guys are with her, but she, uh, her nickname's the First Lady. And uh, she basically was undefeated uh, before yeah. uh, losing to Jessica McCaskill. And she was undisputed as well. Uh, I think it was middleweight um, previously. So Jessica McCaskill beat her and they're going to do a rematch. Uh, next year, but that was a big big upset because Jessica McCaskill's lost to Katie Taylor, uh, Katie Taylor, sorry, and she's a good fighter, but she was she was seen as a big underdog going into that fight. So, yeah. but Katie I, Taylor I, was on Dylan White's undercard, and yeah. Terry Harper wasn't. Okay, Terry Harper must have been on another another card then. Uh, maybe the, I yeah. think the Sam Eggington Ted Cheeseman one. Maybe I think maybe that one. Um, but yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you guys think of Terry Harper? I think that's that's what I can yeah, yeah, lean towards. I think she's had a very, very good year. And uh, I think she's definitely someone to look she's out for. three or four times as well, which is quite surprising. Yeah, 100%. A lot more than other fighters. So yeah, yeah. Impressive. Very, very active. So I think that's definitely something to play, to uh, factor in. Also, honourable mentions to uh, Chantal Cameron, uh, who became a world champion, WBC world champion, um, only a few months back, actually. And uh, is undefeated and is looking to really make big fights against people like Katie Taylor, etc. She's in the same division or or one weight below. So, yeah, some uh, very exciting fights on the horizon. Savannah Marshall as well, uh, who's trained by Peter Fury, um, won a world title this year as well. She's the only fighter to beat Clarissa Shields uh, in the amateurs. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of beef between those two, and they're trying to build that for next year. I think so we'll probably see Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall in 2021. Um, even though Cressa Shields is now doing MMA as well next year. So she's doing MMA and boxing, which is yeah. crazy, which is absolute madness. But anyway, okay, uh, well done, uh, Terry Harper, for uh, winning Quality Shots Women, sorry, Quality Shots Women's Fighter of the Year. Um, okay, let's go on to something which I think is a bit exciting Knockout of the Year 2020. Um, 
Musharraf, let's go with you first. What have you got for your knockout of I've the year? I've got two. Um, they're quite close in terms of which one I'd pick, but it's out of um, Javonta Davis against Santa Cruz and Povetkin against White. Yeah, yeah, I've got that listed down for sure. I can, I can definitely get on board with that. What about you, Kevin? Um, I'd definitely just go for Povetkin versus White for that one. Yeah, that was a that was a absolute ridiculous left uppercut from yeah. uh, from uh, Povetkin. I think maybe the significance. I've also got listed. Obviously, uh, we've discussed this a little bit as a Pedro versus Baron trick, just because of the drama and that knockout, yeah. and also uh, maybe a bit of bias. But Joshua Pulev, I thought it was quite a good knockout. The right yeah. hand was a uh, was a good finish. I thought, and I, I maybe maybe a little bit not underrated, but maybe a bit overlooked just because he's done it quite often now. Um, but I think as a knockout, considering how tough Pulev is as well. During that fight, I think the way he finished him was was a good knockout. But I'm happy to go with White uh, versus Povetkin because I just think that came out of nowhere. And the way he slipped under uh, Dylan White yeah. and then came up with a left uppercut was just a ridiculous shot. And you don't... Like, Javonte Davis won against Santa Cruz was very good as well. But I think Santa Cruz was coming up uh, a weight. Yeah, yeah, so even though he's taller, really, and but he's in mm. weight, he's not used to come, coming up to that weight. So uh, Santa Cruz has never been knocked out, which I think is very impressive, which is why that was such a good knockout as well. Uh, so worth noting that uh, that's a very close second, but I just think White versus Povetkin, just the way it happened was just absolute madness. So yeah, uh, well done to Povetkin for winning knockout of the year versus uh, Dylan White. You have won quality shots knockout of the year for 2020. Okay, um, we've got two more categories to get through then and these are kind of looking forward to 2021 so something that I think uh, hopefully with COVID I'm hoping is going to tone down a little bit so we'll be able to see these big fights and we won't have as much kind of fight camps going on etc and we'll see what happens but um, either way fighter to watch for 2021 so it can be anyone um who you're most looking forward to seeing out in 2021 um, kind of seeing, even if it's just, just seeing them fight against whoever, or maybe just looking forward to seeing them fight because you know, they're going to probably going to be fighting X, Y, and Z. Uh, so Kevin, do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, I go for Alexander Usyk for this one, purely because I think he's done really well climbing the, to the heavyweight division. And I want to see him test himself against some of the tougher heavyweights. Okay. Um, that, that's a really interesting pick actually. Oh, that's a good one, though. That's a good yeah. one. Uh, I think obviously there's the. Um, he recently said I think that he's one of the build uh, the obstacles between Joshua versus Fury happening or Fury Joshua whatever happening mm-hmm. next year. But he has now said that he's willing to step aside for probably a considerable amount of money, uh, step aside money, uh, which is kind of good news for people who want to see Joshua Fury. But I think even if he wasn't to fight Joshua next year um, or Fury or whoever it is. Um, I think there's still big fights that are out there for him uh, to, one, test himself, but two, as you said, Derek Chisora is just one fight. Um, so to see him against any decent heavyweight and see him progress, because I think he needs a couple of those fights before facing the big, big boys anyway. Um, so I think you're right. And considering he gave himself, a was it a three out of ten against Chisora? So, yeah. um, so then if, if, if that's actually that's the case... I'm interested to see what yeah. he's at on like 6 out of 10 or something. <laughs> Mate, so if it's a 3 out of 10, then we've got a lot more to see from him, right? Yeah, heavyweight, so <laughs> let's see. Hopefully he doesn't get injured as well. Hopefully he's injury-free. That's a big thing for him mm. uh, as well. What about you, Mashara? Who, who are you looking forward to seeing? Um, I had the short list. Um, Usyk was actually on it. But the one, the fight that I want to see the most, he's one of my favourite fighters at the moment, uh, but he didn't fight in 20, 2020, um, is Artur Baturbiev. So, yeah, um, Art of he's, Atopia, he's, he's a beast. He's, he's, yeah, he's probably, he's in my probably top five, top three fighters just at the moment. Um, but yeah, his last, his last win was unbelievable. I think it was just at the end of 2019 against Kvoznik and yeah. he, he pretty much destroyed him. So, um, I was disappointed not to see him in 2020, but definitely can't wait. I think, he, I think I might be wrong, but I think he's got a fight scheduled. Yeah. For the, like early 2021 so we'll see how it gets on but yeah. the one like I think it kind of rolls into one of the next categories is should I save it or should I say it you'll save it save it save it okay, fine, <laughs> save, save it, it. But, but yeah but, but, but I'm looking forward I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing Baturbiev 
Usyk was on there, and I'll throw a wild card in as well. Uh, Fighter Torch for 2021, Edgar Belanga. Yeah, that's the PBC fight. He's knocking everyone out, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's. Uh, he's I want to see how he gets on as he starts to take better and better fights on. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good, that's a good shout. I think um, Artur Vitebiev was supposed to fight in October against someone in Russia, but it got cancelled because of COVID. As uh, some type, of, I don't, I forgot exactly why. Or he got injured. Actually, sorry, I think he got injured, um, the shoulder yeah. injury or whatever it might have been. So uh, that's why he didn't fight this year. But that fight against Kovalev was just ridiculous. That unification he, fight. Honestly, um, it was unbelievable. It just yeah obviously he had that fight against Callum Johnson where Callum Johnson dropped him so he can be yeah. hurt a little bit but he's just a beast and he's unbeaten and I think he's knocked out every single one of his opponents so this guy is just a wrecking ball um, and yeah Kevin Alexander Usyk is just uh, he's still a little bit of an enigma at heavyweight isn't he because obviously that's so why I want to see him you know, yeah we don't know there's, yeah, there's a lot of mystery, mystery kind of clouding how good he actually is going to be at heavyweight so I think uh, people are saying uh, there's a lot of different views on him. Like he's moving. He's up uncertain, too, I think. Yeah, yes. a lot of people are saying he's moving up too late. A lot of people are saying he's going to be too small now. A lot of people are saying, you know, uh, a heavyweight he's not going to move as well. But then there's some people saying actually no, he's going to grow into it. He does have the ability, he can do it. So. Yeah, I think that's, we want to see. We want to see what he's like with some of the others. That's what. Yeah, be good. We'll be I don't interested. think his size like a pe- like a lot of people make an issue about his size. Yeah. Firstly, he's like what six three, six four six, three, yeah, around six, that four. mark. So he's yeah. not he's not tiny, yeah. and I don't think his size is as detrimental as a lot of people make it out to be. Maybe he'll struggle against Fury and AJ, but yeah, a lot of people will. Maybe even Wilder. Um, I don't think he will against Wilder, but I think he'll have a harder time against Fury and AJ. But yeah. I think against most of the rest of the heavyweight division, it, yeah. I think he he can win most, if not all of them. Yeah, hmm. I think it's a little bit about lack of power as well. People are saying that he yeah. doesn't, maybe doesn't have the that, that could be an issue, but you don't yeah. always need power to win a heavyweight. So. True. Yeah. True. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else that I have off the top of my head. I think um, we obviously touched upon Jaron and some virtual tees. I think they're people to look out for, but I don't know how big their 2021s will be. I don't think they're going to get a world title shot. Um you know what? One that actually is a little bit left field is uh, Ryan Garcia. Obviously, he's fighting against Luke Campbell only in a few days' time on the 2nd of January. Yeah. But I tell you what, he if he wins that fight, uh, he's one to look out for. Uh, obviously, that lightweight division, you've got Tifumo Lopez, you've got uh, Jomonte Davis, you've got Devin mm. Haney. Um, so actually, for me, De- Devin Haney's one that I want to see because I don't yeah. think he's been quite tested enough yet. No. And I'd like to see him in a bigger fight against I think they're saying that he'll fight the winner of Ryan Garcia or Campbell hopefully so if that does happen that will be a very big fight and I just want to see how good he is because people are billing him as the next Mayweather which I think is ridiculous anyway but I just think there's a lot of hype around this kid uh, let's see how good he is um, but I'm happy to go with Alexander Usyk because I think uh, both of you have got him on your list um, I think yeah, there's a lot of mystery around him. Let's see how good he is, and hopefully he fights at least twice next year, if not three times, to see how good this guy's going to be. Because he has to get a move on. He's, what, 33, 34? Mm. So I know you can fight until 40 at heavyweight, but he's he's fought a lot in the amateurs as well. So um, he's got a bit of wear and tear already on him. Okay, um, so well done to uh, Alexander Usyk for being our mysterious uh, quality shot fighter to watch for 2021. Okay, fight that we want to see in 2021. So I think there's obviously a couple of obvious answers, um, but feel free to give me a couple of others as well. Uh, Kevil, let's go with you first. What's your fight to see in 2021? I think well, the obvious one is obviously Fury versus AJ, right? Um, trying to think of other weight divisions who I want to see. I'd actually like to see White versus Wilder as well, potentially. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see other people like Andy Ruiz also come back because um, I think he's, he's he'll do well if he gets his motivation back. Yeah. But I think top of the list for me has to be Joshua versus Fury. Nice. Without a doubt. Yeah, I can see why you'd say that. Um, I might have to say uh, excluding AJ Fury after Musharraf yeah. says his because I'm pretty sure it's going to be AJ Fury. So go on, Musharraf, AJ, AJ yeah, Fury. Ob- ob- obviously, AJ Fury. I think it's like a lot of the other categories you've got, like your standout and then. Yeah, ones that deserve a bit more recognition. So obviously AJ Fury, uh, Spence Crawford. Yeah, I don't know how likely that is. But then my two choices, which I try to like think outside the box, um, 
is one of the fighters I mentioned. So I want to see Canelo fight Baturbiev. That's never going to happen, you know that. I'll tell you now. Canelo <laughs> is not going anywhere near Artur Baturbiev. I, the reason I'm, why I'm I think just, that... Just saying, however unlikely it is, it's one fight <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see. Well, yeah. I, I, I think I would love to see that. But I just have a feeling... Um, Canelo keeps on saying that he wants to clean up a 168. I mean, it could happen yeah. in 2022 maybe or something mm. if, if, if he cleans up a 168 next year and then he thinks, okay, because he said he wants to retire there. But if he cleans up a 168, he might just think, oh, do you think I can maybe push myself? And by that point, Arthur Vitobio is a little bit older as well. And Canelo is probably still in his prime, really. So he might yeah. think, oh, actually, I can get away with it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's a monster fight. Um, what other fight were you going to say? Uh, the other one is uh, Lomachenko against Mikey Garcia. Okay, what weight? Quite, because Mikey Garcia is at 147 now, apparently. <laughs> so. Well, he's not. He's not really. So, um, I don't know. They could even do it at catch weight because neither of them hold belts. I don't think. I don't think Mikey Garcia has a belt, but they could do that at catch weight. 140, 135. They can take their pick. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um so, yeah, Mikey Garcia against Lomachenko at okay. 135, 140, whatever they want. Probably, I don't know. It might, it might just have to be like a catch rate fight, but it's something that I'd like to see. Yeah, I think, I think what was it, a few years back, that was billed as being a huge fight because Mikey yeah. Garcia obviously uh, is undefeated. So, was, well, Lomachenko wasn't, but that was seen as a super fight at 130 even, uh, or 135, I think it was. Um, yeah. And now... Mikey Garcia seems to think he's a one four seven fighter, and uh, I think he's way too small for the weight. I, I, I'd, I'd love to see it. It's just I don't know whether Mikey Garcia can get back down to one three five or whether he yeah. wants to because I just don't yeah. feel like his um his he's one really that has not fought in a long time as well. I don't think. Yeah, I Jesse Vargas was the fight. last fight. Mm. Uh, so I think that was, was that this year or last year. I think it was. I want to say twenty nineteen, but I could be wrong. Um, no, February of this year. Yeah, Perfect. so I guess Jesse Vargas, which is a decent win for him, to be fair. Okay, um, Kevin, well, apart from AJ Fury, then you said Deontay Wilder, Dylan White. Is there any other fights that you're looking forward to? I want to see Garcia versus, is it Tank? What's his name? Haney? Yeah. I want to see that one because that was meant to happen, but it didn't. Are, it... are Ryan Garcia versus Javante Davis? Tank Davis? That's, oh, that's the one, yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, that's drawn to because that was meant to happen, but now it's Garcia versus someone else. I think it's like Smith, Luke Campbell. It? Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell. Yeah, so I'm my name <laughs> right, <laughs> that's right. But, uh, yeah, Luke Campbell versus yeah. Garcia. Uh, Ryan Garcia on the second of Jan. So that's the first kind of fight of the year, which is a pretty big one to be fair as well. Yeah, I think that lightweight division of uh, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, um, Devin Haney, all, all those fighters, Tiffany My Lopez, obviously as well. Uh, it's just uh, it's a booming division so hopefully we see them all fight each other so yeah so I think obviously AJ Fury as we said is our fight to watch for me Crawford Spence is huge um, but I don't know again like Michelle, I don't know if it's going to happen in 2021 uh, just because there's just so much drama I don't know why just get it done like if they can do it with AJ Fury where they're two people that obviously earn a lot more than Crawford and Spence then I don't know why they're two why top rank and PBC can't get together and do it uh, it's just kind of blows my mind a little bit um, but especially after Spence uh, won against Danny Garcia in, in very good fashion as well even more so I'm thinking and I feel like Crawford as well in a year or two he's going to be a lot older and he's already I think 33 um, or so so he, at that weight as well you can't go on too long so I'm hoping that they get it made now because now's the time to do it um, yeah, so apart from AJ Fury, are you happy for me to go with Crawford Spence for the fight we want to see in 2021? Yeah. Yeah. Canelo Batoviev is the one for me. If you can make like a <laughs> fantasy <laughs> fight, it'd be that. Okay, mm. fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I think I think that would be a good fight as well. I just, yeah. I think maybe for me, the reason why I'm not resonating as much with it because I just, I just have a feeling it's just it's never going to happen either it's never going to happen or it's not going to happen next year anyway mm. um, we might be talking about it uh, this time next year when we look at it and say actually maybe say the same about Spence and Crawford to be fair that's true that's true that's true um, to be fair I can't disagree with you on that um, 
Okay, uh, well done to well, not well done. Get it made, uh, Spencer and Crawford. <laughs> get it made. <laughs> fight we want to see in twenty twenty one. So that's our quality shot. Fight we want to see. Obviously, AJ Fury um, mm-hmm. is the obvious one, and so we just wanted to get something different. Um, before we wrap up, actually, is there anything you guys want to touch upon in terms of uh, twenty twenty as a year, or, or even kind of things you're looking uh, to see, looking forward to seeing in twenty twenty one, or just your thoughts on boxing as a whole? Uh, I miss going to shows and I can't wait to go to my next one. I yeah. think the last the last fight I went to was I think Lomachenko against Campbell. Yeah. So that's what, my, a year and a half ago. So me and Kevin went to AJ Povetkin. Yeah, which was wow, last year. Two years ago. Uh, two, uh, two, two years, years. Two, two years, two years ago, yeah. It's 2018, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And wow. uh, obviously he hasn't fought in the UK since last month. I wanted to go to the uh, Povetkin versus... No, what was Price. it? Uh, Povet- no, P- not Povetkin, sorry. The Dylan White versus Chisora 2. Uh, but didn't end up getting that. And Lomachenko Campbell as well. Uh, but the time isn't... But I would have loved to have seen Lomachenko. So I definitely envy you for being able to see... I also Lomachenko. ended up going to White against Rebus. Uh, that came off out of nowhere. I think one of my friends got tickets, so I went to that. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. What about you, Kevil? Which one? What, what I want to see, or just no, like just, what, just any thoughts on the year uh, that we haven't covered, or even just uh, what you, what you think about next year? Well, I think it really depends on what happens with the whole COVID situation on how much they can really ease up the fights, because I think that's affecting the boxers who want, like, if they actually want to fight or not without having a crowd. So hopefully, like with if COVID improves, then I just want to see everything go back to how it was, you know, like audience in the crowd, boxers fully motivated and fighting everyone, that kind of thing. Yeah, but I yeah. think I think I'm uh, looking forward to hopefully being able to get together and watch fights because at the moment I'm watching it by myself and it's pretty sad. <laughs> so I wanna, like we watched, um, we all watched uh, Wilder, was it Wilder Fury 2, um, mm. AJ Ruiz 2 as well. We watched and uh, we stayed up late, which is really good fun. All of us, you know, got together and just split mm-hmm. the pay per view and watched it. And uh, it's quite funny. We saw fighters that we never probably would know about, like that towering Inferno guy. Who was just, <laughs> yeah, you know, I've actually forgotten his name because I, all I know him as is now towering Inferno. Oh, but, I, Inferno. I, but I recognise him. Fundora, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah, Fundora. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Sebastian Fundora. Yeah. He was on. Um... He was, he was on Spencer's on... undercard, right? Yeah, he was. The other day. He was. So, so that's why I watched it. I was like, oh, yeah, he's in. And he's that was the, pretty good. Honestly, I've never seen a mismatch as bad as that. <laughs> the <laughs> other guy was like barely five foot. And he's like <laughs> yeah, out here, yeah. six, foot, six foot eight, six foot seven. And yeah, it was hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just, yeah, I'm missing that. So I'm hoping we can get a couple of uh, fights. And if we, fingers crossed, if we do get AJ versus Fury, then hopefully. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if we'll be able to get tickets, but I'm going to try my best to get tickets for that if it's in the UK, which I doubt the first one will be. But mm. maybe if the second one is in the UK, like maybe back end of uh, next year, then hopefully we can get tickets for that or at least sit together and, and watch it and not have COVID get in the way. So fingers crossed for more of a, yeah, a kind of more of a COVID free year, but we'll see how mm. it goes, I guess. Um, yeah, anything else, guys? Or are you okay to wrap up? All good. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, thank that's you great. very congratulations much. Congratulations to all the fighters. Yes, congratulations, especially the ones that got the terrible ones, like upset of the year, and you know, <laughs> and one on the receiving end of knockout of the year, <laughs> most disappointing <laughs> fighter. Yeah. But um, yeah, thanks very much, guys, for joining me as well for your input. I really appreciate it. And yeah, guys, thank you very much for joining us for the inaugural quality shot uh, boxing awards. And uh, hopefully, many more years of uh, quality shot boxing awards to come. And look, f- I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And of course, we'll be recording and also releasing uh, regular videos. So I'll be covering Garcia versus Campbell. And I've got an interesting Dylan White video that I've done, which I'm going to release. Uh, just kind of talking a little bit about what's going on Dylan White and uh, what's going to happen next for him, because there's a little bit of mis- mystery around his path now after that defeat to Povetkin. Okay. um, Again, thanks very much guys and uh, have a great new year. If I don't speak to you before then and everyone at home as well, have a great new new year and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much.